So Tom, I want, my first question, I wanted to ask you about the U.S. relations in Burma. Do you believe that what the United States what the United States is doing economically, is it ethical amidst all of the human rights violations? Well, the, the United States has really been the only country thus far insisting that its companies investing in Burma live up to decent standards of behavior. Uh, I'd, I'd still like to see the U.S. do more in that respect, but they are at least trying. And I think the important thing now is if U.S. companies are going to have to live up to these standards in Burma, to work with the Burmese government to ensure there's a level playing field and that all companies investing in Burma should be required to uh, report the, the funds that they spend, especially money that they pay to the Burmese government, that they uh, take care of the environment, that they not take any part in land seizures or other abuses against the people of Burma. Uh, that would be good for uh, American business, which has to live up to those standards, and it would be good for the Burmese people. Tom, what's your feeling about what's going on in Rakhine State between um, the Rohingyas and, and the Rakhine? Do you believe that it's a societal issue, or do you believe that the government is playing a major part in the turmoil? The, the problem in the Rakhine State is both a societal issue and uh, an issue of government responsibility. Uh, there does need to be uh, I, I think a greater awareness in Burmese society uh, about the, 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 the suffering that the Rohingya have faced over many years uh, inside Burma and the, and the conditions that are causing so many of them to risk their lives to flee in boats. Uh, everyone deserves human rights. Everybody who has lived in Burma deserves to be treated like a human being. That said, the government also has big responsibilities. It is the state government in Rakhine State that has imposed these draconian restrictions on the lives of the Muslim people living in that part of the country, which are not consistent with Burma's international human rights obligations. And those rules, those regulations do need to change as part of the reform process in Burma. What do you see, what do you see happening to the Rohingyas? Do you believe that a good outcome will come out of it? in the near future? I hope so, for Burma's sake, not just for the sake of the Rohingya, but for the sake of Burma's reputation as a country that lives up to the principles that the NLD and the Burmese people fought for for, for very many years. Um, if at the end of this story the Rohingya uh, are all living in camps uh, or fleeing in boats, that is a tragedy not just for them, but for the country. Another ethnic group, the Kachins. I loved what you had said on stage when you were talking about um, why this conflict had happened. It, it's, it's also the Kachini fighting back. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what happened between, why is, this, why is this ongoing war happening? It's a long story, but the, <laughs> there was a ceasefire for 17 years, which the Kachin felt did not um, uh, resolve the political constitutional problems that are the root of this conflict. Uh, the army broke the ceasefire, and there has been a lot of fighting since in which uh, the army has suffered huge, huge casualties. Uh, and so I think one problem now is that some in the army want to punish the Kachin uh, for the, the suffering of, of the army troops who have been sent into battle and killed. Uh, the Kachin feel like they haven't done so badly on the battlefield and that, for the, that agreeing to another ceasefire might not be in their interest unless uh, it comes with a broader agreement on the political questions that um, are the cause of this fighting. And also in her Union Day speech in Burmese had said, you know, it's not, it's not my, f I'm not supposed to fight every battle. If the willing parties want me, I will talk, f talk about it. But the willing parties meaning the Rakhine, the Rohingyas, and the Burmese government. So do you think that this is a cop-out. Do you think that this is, do you think she's making a concrete statement? And why isn't she saying something more substantial or something more? 
opposition leaders don't wait for the government to invite them to take part in debate on important national questions. Why do you think she's not saying anything? Because I think her focus right now is not on being an opposition leader, but on uh, preparing for uh, constitutional change, hopefully after 2015, and maintaining a, um, a relationship of trust with the Army uh, to ensure that uh, they support the constitutional change that is needed for Burma to become a democratic state. Uh, and I understand uh, why she feels that that's important, because the great prize in Burma for anyone who has been fighting for democracy is a change in the Constitution. But at the same time, if she is to be the leader of the opposition, she also has responsibilities right now and a political interest in maintaining the trust and loyalty of her own constituencies, including those in the ethnic minority areas. I don't think they expect her to solve the problem. She can't uh, all by herself. But I think they do look to her to speak out about abuses of human rights um, and uh, about the suffering that they face on a daily basis. Um, many other politicians in Burma are speaking out on those issues, um, both on the NLD side uh, and uh, on the other side. And it, it is, it's, it's strange for many people not to hear Aung San Suu Kyi's voice in those debates. Thank you so much, Tom. Sure. It's a pleasure. Of course. Thank you.